Six million dollar houses in Sydney. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to jump 25 years, or probably a bit less now, 23 years into the future and look at what housing is expected to cost in Sydney and other places around the world. Now we've had viewers who recently bought in Sydney and they'd love to hear this, uh, this episode because, well, the median price is predicted to be over $6 million dollars by 20, what, 2043. So let's have a look at this, because just, you know, can you imagine wage growth? Keep it up. <laughs> so, and we'll just, we'll skip past this introduction here. I will have a look here at house prices. Over the past 25 years, the median house value nationally has risen by 412% or 459,900. So in 93, in 93, the median price was what? Down about here and look at it now. Look at that now. Nationally, the median value, and this is 2018, mind you, so it's probably skimmed a bit off from that, but still. It's, you know, shaved a bit off. The average annual dollar change in 25 years was $18,000 per year. If you look at Sydney, it was 34000 Units were nationally, the you know, average was 15,000 per year. In Sydney, it was 23,000 per year. Long-term annual capital gains have been reasonably diverse across the capital cities, with growth in home values ranging from 5.9% per annum in Adelaide and Brisbane to 8.1% in Melbourne. Across the capital city uni unit markets, annual growth rates have ranged from 4.1% in Darwin to 66 in Melbourne. In dollar terms, Sydney stands out with the average annual increase in house and unit values equating to 34,000 and 23,000 annum respectively over the past 25 years. But the question is, will these predictions that they're making here, will they stack up? Because there's now we've now seen a cultural shift. Units are no longer the popular you know, investment uh, sought after hot investment item that they once were. They're starting to actually shave and lose, lose a bit of value, even more so, where people are actually contemplating living regionally, where our work environment now has changed even since this was taken. Much greater acceptance of digital meetings, working remotely. People have been forced to let their staff work from home. And when they see the potential savings in commercial office space, well, that's going to flow through. But the danger is if you can work from home, you can work from home in Australia, and you can work from home anywhere overseas too. So, demonstrating the difference in values between now and 25 years ago, in 93, 98% of all home sales nationally transacted at a value under 400,000, and only 0.2% sold for more than a million. Over the past 12 months, and this is when this was written, only 29% of houses nationally sold for less than 400,000, and 16% sold for at least a million. Across Australia's highest priced capital city, Sydney, 25 years ago, only 0.8% of houses sold above the $1 million mark, whereas over the past year, 50% of all homes had a price tag of at least $1 million. And now things are starting to appear in the media as well, where they're anticipating that housing is going to shoot up again. So this is, you know, from Aussie, 25 years from now, this is their, their, you know, what they were predicting. If property prices were to rise at the same rate as the past 25 years, Australia's median house value would reach 2.9 million by 2043. While the past isn't always the best predictor of the future, it's a worthwhile benchmark to consider when housing values may be 25 where, where housing values may be 25 years from now. Based on national house values rising at the annual rate of 6.8% per annum over the past quarter of a century, in 2043, the national median house value would be approaching the $3 million mark. And the median unit value will be just over $2.1 million. While it is hard to fathom, it certainly is. If we saw the same rate of capital gains... As, as 
what was recorded over the past 25 years, Sydney's median house value would be $6.35 million in 2043. And the typical unit will be worth $3.47 million. Melbourne's median house value would be approaching $6 million, while the median house value in Brisbane will be $2.24 million. Obviously, these simple extrapolations don't take into account how economic and demographic conditions may play out over the next 25 years. Well, they didn't take account of what would happen this year, did they? Or how housing demand and supply may evolve. So there is a real possibility that housing trends and growth rates could look remarkably different to what we've seen over the past 25 years. What do you mean? Do you, do you mean future generations aren't going to get the, what is it, advantage of 412% growth in a 25-year period? And we won't be able to you know, pretend we're property geniuses by just getting lucky. What do you mean? Oh, come on. The average size of Australian home loans has increased by 376% over the past 25 years. The average loan size has broadly increased in line with dwelling prices across Australia, with the typical loan size reaching 388000 in 2018. What we're going to see as well, now that there'll be calls for, I'm just waiting for Mortgage Keeper to become a real thing, but when they're allowing people to access super, they're going to make it you know, easier for people to borrow and with such a low cash rate that we have now. Because it's funny, they talk about low cash rates in this document and it's a couple of years old. So, you know, we're, we're sitting on, on a rate that they couldn't even fathom back when they were writing this. So it just shows you how much fuel they're chucking on the property fire now. So there you go. Look at the average home loan size from, you know, under 100. In 93, New South Wales was 97,000, the average home loan size, guys. Victoria, 77. Queensland, 77. SA, 71. WA, 72. Tasmania, 55. Northern Territory, 75. Look, look at those prices. Sub 100 grand in 93. Look at the change. 370% up in Sydney. 417 in Victoria. 330 in, in, in Queensland. 335 in South Australia. Look at those per annum changes. The average owner-occupy loan size has broadly increased in line with dwelling values across Australia, with the typical loan size reaching 388 in 2018. So here's the average standard variable. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Despite loan sizes increasing approximately with the housing cycle, mortgage rates have fallen dramatically over the same time frame. Yeah, look at that. Look, it's not actually touching the line. Remember those days, guys. Remember when you could get, you know, 3% interest on your bank or 2% interest. 25 years ago, the average standard variable mortgage rate was recorded at 10% compared with the standard variable mortgage rate of 5.2% in 2018. Right now, you get fixed at 1.99 and variable pretty, pretty bloody low too. The proportion of household income required to afford a typical mortgage has risen over the loan term, but has improved with lower mortgage rates. It's even lower now. Serviceability rates have improved since 2008 when the average household was what was dedicating 51% of their annual gross income to servicing a mortgage. Wow. 51%. That ain't good. Isn't it meant to be like 30%? That's the rule of thumb. Down down here. That's what I... Maybe I've been watching too much Dave Ramsey, guys. But it's meant to be about, round about here, isn't it? 30%. No wonder it's going to be so hard for people to get in the housing. You've got to save deposits. And then just to get ahead and to decimate it, it it's going to be... It's going to get tough. Look at that. Brisbane now. Well, there you go. 49% in Sydney. Brisbane, 31%. Melbourne 42. Service, serviceability rates have improved since 2008, with the average household was dedicating 51%. We'll scroll down here. Housing affordability has become more challenging with dwelling values rising faster than household incomes. And we're entering a recession, guys. It's going to be amazing if wages rise. Housing affordability pressures are most felt in the market when home values have risen dramatically in Sydney and Melbourne. There you go. Oh, here we go. Percent of annual ha annual household income required for a 20% deposit. So in Sydney, in 2001, it was 616. 2018, it was 185%. I mean, look, look. I mean, I'd love to see it back to uh, to 1993, guys. There you go. In in Brisbane, in 1001, it was 74%. Then it was 119. In Melbourne, 159. 
you've only got one sub-100, and that was Darwin at 83%. Has affording, housing affordability is likely to be one of the key topics amongst budget-sensitive segments of the market, such as first-home buyers and low-income families. There's another one here that I think... Um, oh, first-home buyers have become a smaller proportion of the housing market over the past 25 years. We can see in 93... In New South Wales, there were 18.5. In 2018, there were 14.2. So it seems like, well, now with all the stimulus, there seems to be an increase of first-term buyers. But I wanted to show, there's a chart here I wanted to show you. The rise of housing as a preferred investment. Oh, there you go. Look at this. Look at housing as a preferred investment from 93, from about 20%, all the way up to 42.8% nationally. We have become housing-obsessed, guys. This wasn't always the way. 42.8%. In This is 2018. It's just going to keep getting worse with all of this. But here we go. First home buyer's demand has faded while investors have stepped up their presence in the housing market. So the trend in participation of first home buyers relative to investors in the housing market has diverged over the past quarter of a century. And you can see here. I mean, look at that. We're becoming... That right there is the K-shaped economy. Right there, everyone, that we've been talking about. That's just going to be exacerbated by this. Right there. The people that are participating in the housing bubble in Australia and those that aren't. High density and smaller lots. I mean, that's not surprising. Unit sales are a proportion of all dwelling sales. They went down. See this spike here? That's related to this. That's foreign investment, guys. Foreign investment. And a lot of it, a significant portion of it, a lot of it in Sydney too, was from overseas buyers pushing up units. And that, that's cooled off. That's certainly cooled off. But there, we'll have to see. You know, his um, vacant land area has shot up. A lot has changed in 25 years. Top 100 suburbs, you can see that here. And I'll link to this, guys, if you want to go through this in greater detail. But it's interesting just looking at just a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, what the predictions were. Six million dollars median house prices in Sydney. And what they've just chucked at the market. So what do you think, guys? Do you think we will see these predicted prices? 6.3 million in Sydney, 2.4 in Perth, 5.8 in Melbourne, 2.2 in Hobart, 2.2 in Darwin, 2.9 in Canberra, 2.2 in Brisbane, 1.9 in poor old Adelaide, and a national median house price of 2.9 million. What do you reckon? And I bet you for that entire time, we'd probably only have 0.1% wage growth, eh? Or maybe 1%. We'll be generous. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Do you think they're dreaming? Do you think they're dreaming? Or would people have been dreaming 25 years ago if that little crappy house that they bought would be worth over a million dollars? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. If you can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone, and I will see you all in the next episode.